Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Tweedy, and this is Clara Cook. And this presentation is on student attitudes towards online learning versus in-person learning. Just to give you a brief introduction, as I mentioned, Jason Tweedy, I'm with the Department of Sociology and Anthropology. Specifically, I teach the criminal justice, um, I teach criminal justice courses for uh, the sociology program. And I am housed at the Tooele Statewide Campus. And Clara, you to, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Clara Cook. I am a senior at Utah State. I'm studying sociology, um, and this is part of my honors capstone project studying online learning. Excellent. So as part of this presentation, there are two bits of research that we are going to be presenting here. As Clara mentioned, she is doing part of this uh, as part of her honors capstone, and so she conducted research into student attitudes on online learning and subdivided within that uh, synchronous and asynchronous online learning as compared to in-person learning. To do um, As part of that, she uh, distributed surveys to gather student attitudes and she will be explaining that in more detail to you and the findings from that. The other part of the research that we've worked on is student attendance patterns this last uh, spring semester, spring 2022 with the Omicron variant uh, being prevalent that semester. There was a rare opportunity we had looking at attendance patterns. Many of the courses at the statewide campuses are already broadcast uh, statewide, recorded, et cetera. And so with many students having to miss class due to quarantine rules and such, a lot of those classes gave students the opportunity to either show up in person if they were healthy, to show up via Zoom if they were not or if they chose to, and also to watch the recording of class afterward in a asynchronous fashion. Essentially, students had a bit of a choose your own adventure situation where they could pick which method they wanted to engage with the course. We had data collected on those attendance patterns and that's what I'm going to be discussing for you today. So first, let's have Clara uh, explain what she found from her surveys. Okay, so my section of the presentation covers student attitudes towards online and in-person learning. Um, for this research, I sent out a survey to Utah State students and got about 115 responses uh, from students who'd taken in-person, synchronous online courses and asynchronous online courses. So for this portion, I'm going to look at a couple of things that may show differences in benefits of online versus in-person learning, how that impacted student success, and then what they said about the outcomes of their course, whether they would do it again. So the first thing that I looked at was instructor accessibility, whether or not students felt that they could reach their professor if they had questions on class material, if they were struggling with a certain portion of the course, and in-person courses did exceptionally well in this area. About 75% of students in the in-person courses said that they that agreed that their instructor was accessible, um, whereas the asynchronous online courses did the worst, with the highest percentage of disagreement in this area coming from the asynchronous online courses. The Accessibility decreased between the in-person, synchronous, and then online, uh, sorry, asynchronous online courses, but the decrease was especially noticeable among students who spent average or above average time on academics. So students who are generally a little bit more devoted to their studies, who spend a little bit more time, uh, had the greatest decrease in feeling that their instructor was accessible between the in-person course and the asynchronous online course. Another area where we can compare the benefits of in-person learning versus online learning is in whether or not students were able to make their desired number of friends in their course. And the most interesting portion of this graph is the strongly disagree category. And that number more than triples between the in-person courses and the asynchronous online courses. So there is a, a vast gap between the number of students who said that they were not able to make their desired number of friends in their in-person course as compared to the number of people who said that they were not able to make their desired number of friends in their asynchronous online course. And this is the overall uh, view of this with for all students. But when 
looking at particular trends, it's especially noticeable for students who only had one to two semesters. So this gap between um, in-person and asynchronous online students who disagreed that they were able to make their desired number of friends was especially large in newer students who'd only attended for a year or half a year as compared to older students um, or more experienced students, I should say, who had been in the university program for a while. When it comes to whether or not the relationships we just discussed had any impact on how well the students felt they did in their online courses, more students disagreed than agreed that those connections had any impact on their success. So while students may not have been able to create relationships with other students and professors in their online courses to the same degree that they did in their in-person courses, it didn't necessarily have a strong impact on whether or not they felt that they succeeded. And this was especially true for 4.0 students where they were least impacted by connection with 77% of them disagreeing that their connection with students and professors had any impact on how successful they felt in their online courses. And this trend continued with all A students. In regards to overall success, most students agreed to some degree that they succeeded in their courses regardless of the format. However, in-person courses definitely did the best in this area with about 75% of students in in-person courses saying that they succeeded in their course. What's interesting about this graph is that the percentage of asynchronous online students who said that they uh, agreed to some degree that they succeeded in their course is actually higher than the percentage of students in synchronous online courses who said that they agreed to some degree that they succeeded in their courses. So contrary to previous the previous trend that we've seen where uh, the success rate drops from in-person to synchronous to asynchronous, um, synchronous online actually didn't do as well in students agreeing that they succeeded in their course. However, asynchronous online courses also had the highest number of students disagreeing that they succeeded in their course. So perhaps asynchronous online students are very passionate about whether or not they agreed or um, disagreed that they succeeded in their course. But for this particular question, the, there was a higher percentage of asynchronous online students who said they agreed than synchronous online students. When it comes to 4.0 students, so highest GPA students, the percentage who strongly agreed that they succeeded dropped from 80% in their in-person courses to 56% in their asynchronous online courses. And this did follow our trend with uh, in-person at 80%, synchronous online at 71%, and asynchronous online at 56% of 4.0 students strongly agreeing that they succeeded. On the flip side of that, uh, C average students who agreed that they succeeded in their course actually rose from in-person courses to asynchronous online courses. So the percentage of C average students who agreed they succeeded in their in-person courses was actually lower than the percent who agreed that they succeeded in their asynchronous online courses. So with this in mind, was the online learning experience positive for students? And in general, students said yes. Uh, most students agreed that their online learning experience was a positive one. Did their online learning enhance their university experience? This one was not as strongly positive as whether or not they had a good experience in their online course. So it's kind of split thirds, disagreed, neutral, and agreed to some degree. Uh, so a little bit more balanced on this one, not a strong sway either way. Finally, if students were required to retake their online course, would they opt for an in-person version instead? And more students agreed than disagreed that they would choose the in-person version. In fact, three times as many students strongly agreed that they would take an in-person version than strongly disagreed that they would take an in-person version. Students who said that they didn't succeed in their online courses were more likely to choose the in-person version as well. So to recap, when it comes to forming relationships with instructors and students, 
in-person classes were more beneficial than online classes. However, students said that this didn't impact their success in the various courses and didn't impact their positive experience uh, with the online courses. Now, whether or not students would actually choose and attend an in-person course as compared to an online course, as this graph would suggest, um, is a question that I will leave for Dr. Tweedy. Thank you, Clara. In this section, we're going to look at the actual attendance patterns of students, looking at whether they attended a class in person or in some online fashion, either synchronous or asynchronous fashion. I do want to give you a little bit of background on the data I'm going to present here, uh, why we gathered it, how we gathered it, and so forth. I teach at the Tooele campus, and we collected this data during the 2022 spring semester. The reason we did that is this. During that semester, there were concerns of the spread of the Omicron variant of the coronavirus. Now, the classes we teach at the statewide campuses are broadcast in a IBC format. In other words, the interactive video conferencing. I teach at the Twilla campus, but I have students at campuses all across the state, UNA Basin, Logan, Price, etc. And because we had the video set up um, to do the interactive video conferencing already, one of the things that was implemented during the spring 2022 semester to aid students who had contracted the coronavirus was a Zoom option for students to attend class. In other words, students who had contracted the coronavirus could click on the appropriate link and join in class from the comfort of their home if they had caught the virus and couldn't come to campus. Likewise, those classes were recorded via Zoom for students to watch at a later time. The thought being that if a student was not feeling well due to the coronavirus, they may not be um, available to come on via Zoom um, during class time due to tiredness, whatnot. And so we give them the link to watch the recording at a later time. Now, the interesting thing here is the Zoom links and the recordings after the fact were not password protected or anything like that. So really any student could attend via Zoom or could watch the recording afterward, whether or not they had actually caught the coronavirus. And so it had this, there was this interesting situation then where students had a bit of a choose your own adventure set up, right? Even though the class was an in-person class, they could choose whether in fact they wanted to uh, engage in class in person, whether they wanted to attend and engage in a Zoom format, a synchronous format, a uh, synchronous online format, or whether they wanted to watch the recording after the fact in an asynchronous online format. Now, why this is interesting, as Clara had noted uh, it, with her surveys, many students had indicated that for classes they had taken in a online format, they were asked, would you have preferred to take it in an in-person format had that been offered? There were quite a few that had indicated, yes, that's something I would prefer. With this sort of setup here, where students actually had the chance to do that, we have a little bit of an opportunity here to see whether that's actually true. They say they would prefer to engage in the course in an online, I'm sorry, in an in-person format if it were offered. Now we've got a setup where that was the case. You could have it in person or you could choose to show up via Zoom or you could watch the recording. When given those options, do students actually do that? That is what we're going to look at in this section. So um, just a little bit on measurement here. For the measurement of in-person and synchronous online attendance, so your Zoom attendance, the way we measured that is the facilitators. Those are the people at the statewide campuses and at the distance um, education building up on the Logan campus who make sure that all the broadcast is sent and received appropriately for all classes, help with all the sound issues, broadcast and video issues and so forth. So at the Twilla campus, the facilitators in each class would track the in-person attendance and the synchronous online attendance, the Zoom attendance in each class and make note of that. 
asynchronous attendance was a little bit more difficult. There was no data kept on how many people clicked on a link. That just wasn't something that was tracked in the system. So we had to come up with an estimate for that. To do that, what we did is we got the overall enrollment number for each class, and then we modified that a bit by subtracting the number of students that failed a class from the overall enrollment number. And then after that, we subtracted the in-person and synchronous attendance, the Zoom attendance, from the overall enrollment, and that gave us an estimate for the asynchronous attendance. The idea would be, okay, if you showed up, if you didn't show up in person and you didn't show up uh, via Zoom, then you must have watched the recording after the fact. Now, we know that that probably isn't the case. There's probably students who just did not interact in any fashion. And so that is why we modified that overall enrollment number a bit by subtracting the number of students that failed. The idea being, okay, that's not to say that a student that failed never attended class, but it gives us a little bit more accurate uh, number to go with when we're trying to estimate how many students likely interacted in some asynchronous fashion with the course material after the fact. Okay. Based on that, then we calculated the percentage uh, for each class of attendance. What percent was in-person attendance, what percent was synchronous attendance, and what percent was asynchronous attendance. And these are the numbers that we uh, found from that. Now, this is based on 57 courses that we had gathered data for during the spring 2022 semester. If you look, the breakdown is essentially 30, 30, 40, as, as far as percentages go. 30% in-person attendance um, on average, about 30%, you know, 28% um, synchronous attendance, Zoom attendance on average, and then 42% asynchronous attendance on average. Okay. Now, if we look at, um, we did break it down here by, you know, um, level of the course to see if that made any difference. So your lower level courses are your one and 2000 level, upper level are three and 4000 level and graduate levels, anything above that. So those numbers, it doesn't appear terribly like though the level of a class had much impact on this. You do see at the graduate level that there was 52% uh, asynchronous attendance. So that's a little bit higher. Um, but I would note that the number of graduate level courses that comprised uh, the courses we looked at was relatively low. So I don't know that there's a ton of stock that we can place in that, um, whether that's going to you know, hold true in all instances or whether it was just in this limited instance. So that is what our research has found. As far as what everybody should do with it, I don't know that either of us can give you that answer. Really, the purpose of this is just to show you what the data shows. What do students say they prefer? in terms of online learning versus in-person learning and what does their attendance pattern show they may prefer in uh, regards to online learning versus in-person learning um, we hope that it is instructive as you go forward planning courses whether you're doing it just as an individual professor if you have some role where you're deciding for your department, what formats you should be presenting courses in or offering courses in. Hopefully it, is in. hopefully it is instructive in those regards. If you have any additional questions for either of us, we have our email addresses here at the bottom of the screen. Please feel free to contact us and we can provide you any other um, background or other information that we have regarding our research and hopefully that will be helpful. Uh, thank you for watching our presentation today and we will see everybody later. Thank you very much.